Skylar with Lean Frontiers. And as you are all logging in, um, I'm just going to give my brief little blurb and then we'll hand it directly over to everyone who is presenting today. So um, just a quick reminder that you will receive a link to view the recording within 24 to 48 hours. That will come directly from me um, and it will take you to a YouTube link or to our Lane Frontiers Teachable account. Also, um, another reminder is that TWI and Cauticon 9, those two summits will be coming up in March. So um, it is actually almost the end of the year. So not too much longer before that summit is here. Um, and I believe that is all I have for now. And I will hand it over to these gentlemen. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Heath Scholar. And as I always say, appreciate Lean Frontier's coordination with um, putting these things together. So we have Anthony Burns from Washington and John Moores from over in uh, the East Coast, who were with us last time. And we have two new people joining us. Alex Russo, also from Washington, who's a CI guy, and Jeremy Morlock, who's the um, ops manager in the Church and Dwight's um, Ohio plant. So in the vein of getting straight into it, as we did last time, these guys, I've told these guys and we've uh, made it clear that they're to tell it exactly how it is, uh, the good and the bad, and what they've, but most importantly, what they've learned along the way and what they would perhaps do differently if they had that time again. So let's go straight to Anthony. Now, I know you've stalled, Anthony. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, but tell us why. Um, tell us a bit about that, why that's happened and what you've learned from that. Well, yeah, Oscar, uh, after our week-long uh, session with you on uh, <clears throat> Kata training, I was really enthusiastic, as I imagine most people are, to jump into practice uh, what I just learned. And I grabbed a hold of the very first uh, problem-solving topic that came across my desk. And uh, uh, to summarize it, I tried to hammer a square peg into a round hole and it was just a very clumsy fit um, luckily uh, through your coaching and also the consultant i was using who's familiar with kata realized that i was going to get upside down on this really quick um, not to be discouraged i took a second swing at using the kata methodology uh, to solve a problem here uh, locally in washington and Maybe because of my own bravado or the alpha male in me, I took on a really big project that had huge uh, financial and efficiency implications. And uh, had I had more time on the calendar, this could have been appropriate. But unfortunately, um, the timeline to implication and my own slow approach with the, these new tools, they just didn't uh, line up. And, uh, uh, the plant leadership uh, finally had to take the project and we just kind of used our own methodology and shoved it across the finish line. So really no uh, true kata implications there. So um, I'm 0 for 2, um, but I'm not discouraged. I'm a tenacious uh, fellow. Um, and I think I got a, a, a concept that I'm going to deploy here. Uh, at the end of the year, early Q1, and I'm going to dip, dip. I'm taking on something a little bit smaller, something that doesn't have huge financial uh, and efficiency implications, so I can move at my own pace because I need to learn as I go through the Kata process. So, um, following our coaching session, I've already uh, had some communication with my plant manager, and he's fully supportive of me taking on something smaller and definitely, uh, you know. It'll allow for me to learn as I deploy the Kata methodology. So next time we meet, I'll definitely have something more to report out. Like I said, I'm not going to get discouraged. Um, you know, nobody so, likes so if you had your time again. If you had your time again, Tony, what would you do differently? Um, that's one of the questions that's come up from one of the yeah, participants. Yeah, definitely. Uh, put your own ego in check and do something small and manageable, you know, and I, and I know we discussed this in the 10 hour class, you know, uh, get a couple of small wins under your belt so that you get the repetition. Um, mm. So I'm definitely, if and I can learning. do it all over again, something small. The, the learning that comes through repetition and learning, you've got to, you know, 
like I had a couple of days ago with a guy over here where we were doing some training stuff. You've got for people to learn, you've got to slow things down. Yeah. So the plant and the management need to be ready for that in a yes. learning environment. Yeah, they have to be. And you got to sell that up front, you know, almost like chartering a Kaizen and make sure everybody understands the yes. this technique doesn't it's not rapid deployment, especially being a newbie to the whole Kata methodology. Sure. No worries. Thanks for that update, um, Tony. Now, Alex, uh, you were also on the, in our group back in um, October. You have had some um, uh, had a crack, which is great. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And if there's anything you want to share via your screen, away you go. Yes. Yeah. So I, I basically, um, you know, coming out of that event, tried to tackle uh, two projects, you know, using that Kata uh, method of, of thinking and learning. So um, two very different topics. So one was uh, doing a, a changeover reduction. So reintroducing um, uh, compressed air nozzles uh, into our line clearance. And the other was actually uh, standardizing and improving one of our, our lean daily management meetings um, in the morning, our, our tech tier two meeting. Um, so I'm going to touch on the, the line clearance one at first. So um, just so everybody kind of has a, a perspective on what I'm talking about, I'm just going to share on my screen. Um, is this coming through? Yep. Beautiful. Okay, so well, what, what I'm showing you here is in our packaging facility. Um, you know, in Washington, we make gummy vitamins. Um, where, where I'm at specifically is in, in the packaging area. So when we package, we're, we're putting things through what's called an, you know, an AMS filler. Um, gummies are, are coming down through these top shoots up here. Um, then they're going into each 18 individual filler heads going into bottles. Um, well, in the business like vitamins, you have a high degree of skew complexity. Um, so we have a lot of uh, line clearance changeovers. Every time that you know we, we go into a new product, or even a new SKU, there has to be a full line clearance done, even if um, we're running the exact same, same gummy. So historically, we would have used these compressed air nozzles to blow every gummy out of this machine. Um, about a year ago, those were taken away because the, the practice was kind of deemed that it was out of control. Um, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Um, so essentially coming out of Kata, I wanted to say, okay, can we reintroduce these compressed air nozzles to the line um, and use this methodology uh, to, to get that rolling? So um, worked with people directly on the floor. And uh, what was interesting is that uh, I didn't tell them we were doing Kata. Um, I just kind of started to roll this out using the storyboard, using um, the prompted questions we have too. Um, and, and we started to say, okay, our challenge statement is we, you know, we do about 20 to 25 of these changeovers a week. Uh, right now they're taking 45 minutes. So I want to get, or no, 30 minutes. I want to get to a 15 minute line clearance, but I want to do it in a way that, um, that I believe the specifics were 15 minutes with no quality issues or no safety issues. That was our challenge statement. And then we went along and through that process. So hold there, Alex. What I really like about that is it's a balanced challenge statement because you have a, a reduction in time but the second part you said was with no quality issues and no compromising quality and no compromising safety. So it's that aspect which makes the challenge a challenge. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And and I that's really what we wanted to to do with this as well because we already knew we could we could do it. We've done it historically, but now we're adding in new elements. Um, so <laughs> one of the you know we had great success with it. We we did uh, achieve um, that challenge statement. We actually saw like a thirty percent reduction. You know in, in the time. Um, and going along the way, what was interesting is at first I thought I was giving um, the learner kind of a pie in the sky number, right? 15 minutes. The first session they came back and said, oh, we can do it in five, right? Um, and then the next day we came in and I said, okay, five minutes, let's see. And she just giggled and laughed and was like, oh my God, we had so many different things that we didn't think about. Um, but well, that was great uh, experience because then I could come in and say, okay, now, what do you think it will happen if we remove this variable or if we change this variable? Um, so, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. And I think one of the biggest takeaways that I had from it is, you know, it was it was a little bit bumpy. Like we had a storyboard and, you know, it wasn't the prettiest in the world, but still communicated how we were progressing. Um, you know, there were also times where I'm kind of looking at the back of my card and realizing, I don't know how I can say this organically, so I'm just going to ask you in a different way, but try to keep the same methodology, which is that scientific method of thinking. Um, keep the context. 
Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And I'm interested, thinking, sure. tell us a little bit more about that approach. Why did, um, and, and I like it, uh, why did you think, I'm not going to you know, preach the word, so to speak, we'll just get on with this. And as long as I'm thinking that way, they will, fair chance I'll come along for the ride. Tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit more about that approach and why you did that. Yeah, so I, I think that, you know, there's something to be said about when you introduce something new to someone, there's always going to be these barriers that go up of, oh my gosh, this is some, some kind of new process, some kind of new technique. Um, I have to do either do it perfectly or it's going to be too intimidating. So I really didn't want to go into it with that mindset. I just wanted to focus on really we're just running experiments here. It doesn't matter you know, what we call it, but we're just going to be running experiments. Um, and also partially kind of to save my own ego a bit of, hey, I just, I had just learned this, you know, three or four days ago. So maybe I don't want to call it kata yet if it's not going to be kata. Um, <laughs> but that's like 10% of the reason, 90% was the first one. Yeah. Um, but, and, you know, we, then we did this with uh, a meeting, which I was so like, hold, hold me a second, just another quick question. <clears throat> did you get as far as identifying target conditions on the way, or was it pretty much experimenting against the obstacles for the goal, if you if you like, rather than rather than breaking it down, yeah. what was your experience there? No, we we did absolutely. So that was what was great about um, that first experience of oh my gosh, we thought we could do you know X and, and Y happened. Um, along the way, we would say okay, now we've gotten this down. We were collecting you know data on every experiment we ran. Okay, now we've gotten this down to to twenty minutes, but the operator is having to walk around the machine. So now let's say the new target condition is. Let's keep it to 20 minutes, but now we're going to spin the turret with the operator in one place and see what the effect is. Uh, yeah, that's the condition you're aiming for. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, well done. And then Good yeah, just to, and the other one, the not, yeah, the not so tangible one. Yeah, this one I was actually more excited about um, because it was a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, so, you know, we have lean daily management meetings or, or tiered structure in the morning. Uh, we had a, a technical meeting. Um, which was really just kind of all over the place. It didn't have a purpose. I mean, sometimes it would run upwards of twice the, the time it was allotted for. Uh, so I got a team together and uh, one of the members was actually in the Kata class. So that was interesting because along the way, he's kind of checking me on, oh, you didn't say this, or you didn't say that. Uh, so that, you know, that was an experience. But we basically, basically gave him a challenge statement and said, look, I, I want the meeting to be in 30 minutes. And I want to have these deliverables. So I want to have a clear plan for what's our battle plan for the day. Um, I want to leave the meeting feeling like, you know, we have a, a good set of t daily action items and also accountability. Um, there's also key inputs that I want to go into this meeting. You know, it's, it's not just something where we're going to come in and just focus on, you know, our hair being on fire. We're going to come into it with data um, and actually attack the problems that are happening on the production floor. Um, so each time we would literally, this is a daily meeting, right? So we kind of got to have daily experiments of, okay, yeah, this is what we speak today in the agenda. How did this affect it? Oh, we really like that. Okay. So let's keep that. And now let's see what happens if we incorporate this input. Um, and now it's at the point where this is a, a standard meeting. We're still tweaking it along the way, but we're using that same methodology of, okay, let's see what happens. Let's just see what happens if we change, if we change this variable or change that variable. Um, yeah. So it's been exciting. I, I, it's been good to see I it. love the way you're saying that. Uh, let's see what happens. And you, so you're able to conduct experiments within that box of risk, well and truly in something like this. And it's the, so you've got a few things in your favor there from a practice environment, which is that daily cycle. So you can make an adjustment to the agenda and do it tomorrow and see what happens. And then, so you're going to be able to apply this, this, uh, this pattern every day, which is terrific from a learning point of view. Would yeah. you do anything differently in that approach you had, given your experience, would you do anything a bit differently if you were to do that again on that second one? Yeah. So I, I think what I would like to do is, is focus more. So at, at first it was great to kind of have this, uh, Hey, we're, don't even think about us doing kata, right? We're just kind of thinking in the scientific way. I would like to maybe, uh, in order to get this kind of more ingrained outside of just my head, um, do more training on what is kata so that everybody else, the learners now are, are really understanding it um, and can go apply it in different areas without me kind of getting involved. Um, sure. So, you know, I think that's kind of the, 
I don't know if I could have done that differently being so new to it, but that's kind of the next evolution of, okay, well, now we're already thinking scientifically, but let's, let's get this everywhere and kind of have a, you know, a name for it. I think it's an interesting point you raise, and I know it comes up a bit. Do you get people started and just get them going and then explain to them afterwards what's happening or explain what's going to happen and then get them going? And it's really interesting. I don't think there's necessarily a right or wrong. Uh, I think it's a little bit case by case, but there's certainly, I admire your approach. Well done. Thank you. Terrific Thank job. You. Uh, Jeremy, we might go to you now, if that's all right. And then Jonathan, if you don't mind being last. And I notice you've moved that clock above the door that said quarter to six. <laughs> Sure. Away you go, Jeremy. Tell us what you... Well, first thing is, uh, this is the first time you've been on. So what was it in... During that week we had together, at what point did you think, yeah, this might be worth a crack? And and what, what happened to make you think that? Yeah, so very similar to some of the other uh, comments that were made. We talked about these things during the training, you know, risk and getting involved and how you know, how you got to control the situation. So I knew there was a lot of continuous improvement projects already being done at uh, the plant. And this one specifically, that I'm sharing the screen for now is a, is a waste stream. So it's got low risk, right? Like it does have some dollar returns to it, but it doesn't oh, yeah. directly affect production. So I can actually make some tweaks to it and have a little less risk in terms of, you know, affecting a production schedule and things like that. The other thing that's yeah, nice point. about it is uh, it's easy for everybody to see. You walk by it every day, so I can post information and get other people involved in it as well. So that's kind of the two criteria that I selected. And I had people that were already actively working on it, so I had people that were – I didn't have to volunteer anybody or gather anybody to volunteer for it. So I had willing participants. Good. All right, so tell us a little bit about, we've got the challenge there statement. Tell us a little bit about what, just briefly in a few minutes, what you've done, where you've got to, yep. and uh, what you've learned along the way. And in particular, if you were to do it again, what you might do differently. Okay, got it. Uh, so this is cat litter production. Uh, what you're seeing there in the actual condition is uh, and over, so we screen all our material to make sure it don't have, it doesn't have large clumps in the material already. It's a quarter inch screen, uh, circular screen, but we were losing a lot of material through it. So what really is interesting is the driver initially was the amount of times they have to dump this um, container in a shift and they wanted to reduce that. The container was actually a 50 gallon barrel at first, and then it turned into a large bag and now it's turned into this dumpster. So it's grown over time and yeah, right. kind of annoyed people, right? So somebody started working themselves into a situation to try to figure it out. Um, they started to figure out what was causing it at the beginning. That was more difficult. So they went with the route of trying to figure out how to reduce the amount of material that's going in here. Um, so really what we found out in the beginning is there's basically 60% of this is less than a quarter of an inch. It's actually a little higher than that probably. So the right away we're throwing away material that should be going through. Um, so what you're saying there is there's stuff in there that should that 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 by nature of the bee shouldn't be there. Correct. Yeah. So what this person did is this is the current screening process. You can see the material falling down, but a lot of that small stuff is going past those holes. As you can see in the left hand side, and falling into that bin. So they were trying to figure out how you reduce the amount of a little basically those balls bouncing down the screen and not going through. So sure. what they came up with was adding this belting material at the bottom, try to hold it down to the screen. And oh, the reason yeah. they put it at the bottom is, uh, so the first learning condition is uh, the fact that if you put it up higher, they were having problems where they backed the system up, all that stuff would flow back up and stop the system. So there was one of our risks that actually we encountered and stopped production. Um, so Jeremy, just on that, did they put it up higher first and learn that, or did they know that was gonna happen? Uh, they did put it up high at first. That was the very first trial, even before I think I went out to the training. So when I got wow. involved, it was already a known situation. Um, sure. No, that's fine. I'm just interested. Um, and would, would you consider that experiment of putting up it higher was within the box of risk or from, a, from a production point of view, or did they push the boundaries there a bit? Uh, I would say they pushed the boundaries a little bit. Yeah, right. But interesting. So, Go ahead. So given what you've learned, 
had you had that happened afterwards, what might how do you think you might have controlled that um, experiment such that it was within the box of risk? What would you yeah, do differently? So, what would you have had them do differently? So I think there's a couple of things we could have done differently. What's interesting is they kind of predict these things, right? They they know there's an opportunity, but do they have a plan or do they have a controlled approach to it? Um, I think really the biggest problem was is they they didn't uh, go into a with a ton of thought, they just threw some belts that we had on there, which actually went yeah, underneath right. the the uh, vibrator unit in there in the middle and actually kind of held it to the screen, which caused a pinch point. And that's where the right. material started building up. Um, what's interesting to Alex's point, I did the same approach. I didn't come into this with a, here's everything I learned during my kata training. Really, I went into it with the approach of, hey, I learned this new pattern of thinking that we call kata. What I want to do is try to work with you as you bring up things to keep you maybe within some boundaries or at least uh, give you the framework that I was taught and let's see where it goes. So when we talked about these things, that's where I got to talk about uh, obstacles and different things like that, how you select which one to pick. Uh, the other thing that came up naturally with this was, you know, they want to try to put in 12 different experiments in one time and then not know not really collect any data to go from there. So the other thing I tried to bring to the table was, let's pick one thing and actually collect data that we can make decisions on directionally. Um, so what's interesting is the first time we did the data collection was actually very laborious. We weighed that blue tote I showed. Uh, we ran an entire shift, collected all those things, weighed three of them, I think, and then uh, tried to do it that way. What's interesting is we're like, Alex talked about when you came back and talked about it, people were frustrated because that was taking too long. So I came up with a screening method where I just screen the material right there, it takes about five minutes and I could give directional results as well. And they could make quicker modifications, which was uh, key to this because people lose interest quickly, especially when they're less used to the discipline portion of it. Jeremy, I just want to go back to about three or four minutes ago. You said something I think that's very important is that you are able to through your experience in the training you are what you feel you're now able to do is better better guide them in their um experimenting and to keep them within that of that box of risk i was at a um a, a uh, ame thing about four years ago and jay atley from zingerman's was presenting on carter and he said one of the main benefits he got as a leader out of it was it helped him keep people within the corridor of risk so he described it as a hallway this wide, and you're, it's okay to move within it, but as they're getting towards the walls, he was able to ask questions that stop them hitting the wall. And I think that's what you were saying there. Is that about right? That's correct. I think I called them guardrails, but yeah, same, same yeah, guardrails. idea. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, guardrails. Um, terrific. Really well done. I don't want to, uh, I'm going to seem like I'm cutting you off, and I am. Fine because we've got eight minutes left and Jonathan, but really well done, Jeremy. And I know this was a bit short notice and you've just come back from leave, but really appreciate you uh, you giving us that insight. That's fantastic. Thank you. Jonathan. Thank you. Okay, so um, like Tony and Alex, um, I'm with Church and Dwight. I work in York, Pennsylvania and we produce gummy vitamins at my site. We also produce cat litter like Jeremy in Old Fort and um, the third you don't kind get the of value. Two mixed up, do you? Pardon me? You never get the two mixed up. We don't get them mixed up. Um, but we also um, produce, um, we have five liquid laundry detergent lines here, packaging lines. So we, we compound and uh, produce about 800,000 cases of laundry detergent here each week. Um, so my project was on one of those liquid laundry detergent lines, and the project was around uh, reducing changeover, uh, changeover time. And from last time to this time, I'm going to share my screen, I think. Can you see that? Thank you. Yep. Great. Um, so I, we had a team in motion already prior to me taking the Kata training with Oscar um, around reducing change over time. We've had a lot of turnover in our liquid laundry detergent uh, department from the hourly workforce. So we've got a lot of new people on the floor, and we were really struggling with um, changing over effectively. So, um, you know, I, I kind of came into this team and said, would, you know, ask them if they'd be willing to explore using the Kata approach, explain to them a little bit about it, 
And um, before I knew it, they had actually created a kata board for themselves. Um, so you can see that they had already run some experiments. They'd done three observations of a full uh, size changeover on one of our liquid laundry detergent lines. They've created some standard settings. They had made some modifications to a hose manifold. They'd done a number of things. Um, but what I would say about it is that it's it was kind of according to our typical shotgun approach of problem solving. We, you know, come up with a lot of great things to do. And sometimes we don't address the main thing that's in our way of meeting our target. Um, so the team did create a challenge for themselves. Uh, they want to complete the full size changeover, which is our most complicated changeover within 25 minutes with um, five additional minutes of, you know, maybe tweaking and adjusting um, with standard crewing and no safety and quality incidents. They want to do that 100% right uh, the first time. Their actual condition is that it currently takes them a little over an hour to change the line over and they oftentimes spend another 25 to 60 minutes tweaking things in. Um, we oftentimes have rework after we do a full size changeover and we don't have a standard way that we crew um, in terms of assigning specific tasks with targeted times for those tasks. Um, so that was um, what we had captured as their current condition. Uh, so so if, what if I may interrupt, John, you just because I'm conscious of time. It yeah. just goes straight to that uh, experience you've had recently with the op the um, I'll say obstacle management and and just tell us a little bit about that because I think yep. that's very pertinent and it happens a lot. What's happened to you has happened a lot. Yep. So as lot. soon as as soon as we set a target condition, um, you know, I asked the team, "What's you know why can't we do this today?" And one of the comments was, "You know, we can do this today if we had the right crew." So I just started listening to what was kind of in the team's way and just writing as fast as I could. So, you know, if we had the right crew, if we had them trained, right now we don't have any skills matrix. We have, um, you know, a lot of people moving around and, and a lot of holes, vacations, but basically, um, you know, just wrote a lot of the things that were in our way and then asked the team, if you had to work on one of these things right now, what would you work on? And they wanted to go right away to, I need, I need my people trained. And I said, okay, if you were to train them, do you have a standard to which you would train? And the answer was no. So the team aligned on that we don't have a standard way right now. We don't have the one best way to change the line over. And so what we are in the process of doing is, you know, Align is a series of equipment centers. We focused on one equipment center. It's uh, our Hartness, which is a, a case packer. And we've begun to use uh, our knowledge management system, POCA, to create work instructions. And you can see that they've started to create a work instruction for how to change the Hartness over. And we're kind of using what I would call a, a TWI light method. We say, you know, what we're going to do, how we do it, why we do it for each step yeah, of, right. the, of the process. Okay. But, and they're a little stuck at the moment. You said yesterday in our mentoring that they're a little stuck. Just in the next couple of minutes, just tell us briefly what's happening there. Yeah, I think we just had trouble um, kind of, you know, chunking up the obstacle to a small enough piece that we were very clear about what we were going to go after and attack. And, um, okay. you know, I think that was the main thing that kind of had people a little stuck. So the obstacle was a bit big. Therefore, there was a lot of talk about what we can do, but not much action because it was almost too big to get heads around and where to start. Whereas what I understand you're saying is by breaking it down a little bit, it becomes a bit clearer on what you can do just to get started. Correct. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. That's very much uh, pretty close to our time. So thank look, guys. As you know, I very much appreciate it. It's, not, it's much more about what you do after spending a week with me than um, what you do during that week. And there's some really good examples of where you're taking it. So brilliant. Appreciate it. Our next session together is on February the 7th. And um, your boss, uh, Matt King, is going to join us for that. So we might, I'll talk to Lynn Frontiers, we may extend that out to 40 minutes. Because he's yeah, going to talk a little sense. bit about um, the approach from a higher level. So thanks, guys. Really appreciate it. And everyone who joined uh, our live, 
and those who listen to the recording, thank you very much for being part of it. And please, please put February the 7th in your diaries to hear where these guys have headed in the over the next couple of months. So thank you. Thanks, Liam Frontiers, and thanks to each of the... Uh, thanks, for, Oscar. Appreciate it. Have a good Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. A, we're going to have thank a warm everyone. Christmas. You have a cold. <laughs> True story. Thanks. Bye-bye, guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks.